We were just talking about you being a school teacher. You used to be a teacher. How would you grade <laughs> yourself in this first year in office? Well, first of all, um, it has really been the joy of my life um, serving in this capacity. I really wish more people could see the view of the city of Chicago through the lens of a mayor. You know, we've made critical investments of fighting this homelessness crisis, a quarter of a billion dollars, $100 million for violence prevention. We have this big bond deal, uh, $1.25 billion to build homes and to create economic development. Um, I'm very pleased with the start that we've had, um, considering the crisis that I inherited. In fact, the multiple <laughs> crises that I've inherited. Um, but I, I think it's actually still too early to offer up a grade. Yeah. I will say that the first quarter ends at the end of my first term. We're just, we're in the first quarter of the full quarter, uh, if that makes sense. But, you know, until we have the type of economic stability within all of our communities, I actually don't believe that any politician should be walking around patting themselves on the back. So your biggest win to date would be what you think? Wow. You know, there's so many. Um, I, I will say this, though, if I could just put it in, in, in a threefold. Yeah. Um, I'm very, very much pleased with the amount of money that we are committed towards fighting the unhoused crisis. Again, a quarter of a billion dollars there. Um, two administrations ago, as you may be aware, mental health clinics were shut down. We're going to open up two mental health clinics this year and provide more behavioral support services. The third thing that I'm very proud of is the fact that we are engaging young people. I said that we have to hire more young people to build a better, stronger, safer Chicago. A 20% increase in youth employment last year. We added an additional almost $80 million to hire 4,000 more young people. This year, we are in a position to hire as many as 28,000 young people for summer jobs. So fighting this housing crisis, making sure that we're providing mental health support services, and really engaging our young people to have real jobs, to find their purpose, those are things that I'm certainly proud of. So those are the wins. What do you think you could have done better over the course of this last year? Well, I mean, look, I, I, I wish that we didn't have so many years of, of neglect and disinvestment. There are things that I want to move faster. Right. You were elected to fix those things, too. Yeah, way. all of them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I really wish that, you know, the, the hole was not as deep. However, um, we're going to keep moving with with expediency. You know, government in and of itself has built in delay. Um, that's why I charge my chief operations officer to find all of the log jam that exists in the city of Chicago that prevents development. As you know, we released our Cut the Tape initiative that's going to allow us uh, to move business a lot faster in the city of Chicago. So a lot of work to be done, but we're just getting started. I'm very pleased of, of how we've gotten out the gates thus far. So that one thing that could be done better, is there that one yeah, thing? Yeah, government has to move faster. I mean, that, I mean, that's, I don't know if anybody would debate that. Government yeah. has to move faster, and these systems that I inherited, um, that's what we're working to do, is to get our systems to move quicker, uh, because the needs are just that substantial. Busy summer coming up. Yeah. Um, crime is down, mm -hmm. uh, but crime always picks up in the summer. Uh, what, what is the safety plan as we head into these summer months. Well, thank you for acknowledging that since I've been in office, homicides and shootings continue to go down. Vehicular carjackings has gone down. Um, public safety on our Chicago transportation system, the CTA, violence is down there as well. Arrests are up. Violence went down last summer. Um, look, there's still a lot of work to be done. Don't you know, misunderstand me. Yeah. You know, I'm raising my family on the beautiful west side of the city of Chicago, the best side. Everybody knows that. And well, uh, <laughs> as a south sider, just saying. Yeah, for sure. We <laughs> love the entire city. But, you know, arguably, I'm probably the first mayor in the history of Chicago to wake up in one of the most disinvested communities. And as a result of that, violence has been, you know, unfortunately, the prevailing form of existence. And we're working towards um, instituting what I have called my people's plan, where we look at the most violent beats in the entire city of Chicago. So 35 beats comprise of over 53% of the violence in the city of Chicago. And in those beats, since we have shown up with the full force of government, homicides and shootings are down 35, 26%. So we're heading the right direction, but certainly there's still more work to be done. Teen takeovers. Mm -hmm. Is there a plan for 
how to handle those if that becomes an issue again this summer? Yeah, so so far we've been able to prevent uh, many of these team gatherings and they're tough, right? Because you know you have a number of young people that um, have no safe spaces and they look to safe spaces like downtown to congregate and unfortunately um, when those congregations begin to, to emerge, um, there are some safety concerns. So what we've done, we've worked with our community partners as well as our faith community to pay attention to um, these organizing trends to essentially either disrupt them or prevent them from happening or in the event that they do happen that we actually show up to keep people safe. Got it. Um, you have been adamant about ending shot spotter. Why, why is that? Well, because it, it didn't work. Yeah. You know, look, it, we're was talking it good about, enough though to keep through the DNC? Well, it was a part of my approach to be collaborative. This is what I said that I would do: that I don't negotiate my values, but we negotiate the details of them. I could have cut it off immediately, but here's what I did: I work with the the, the corporation to phase it out so that there's a deeper opportunity to give them the chance to provide more substantive research of its benefit. I believe that's the fair thing to do. I could have cut it off right away, but I wanted to demonstrate and show people that I'm willing to work with, with everyone. Some aldermen still want it, neighborhoods want it, your police superintendent has said it's a great tool. Are they all wrong? Well, the data speaks for itself. You know, ShotSpotter has led to less than 1% of arrests. And in fact, the vast majority of the ShotSpotter um, alerts have led to nothing. The question is, how do we build a better, stronger, safer Chicago? Are there other tools of, of technology that we can explore and use? Absolutely. But what we know for sure, here's the one thing that we, sh we, we, we know that the best way to create a better, stronger, safer Chicago is to invest in people. And what do those investments look like? Again, youth employment, the economic development you know, through our bond deal, to build more homes as well. We're building affordable homes downtown. Have you ever heard of affordability in downtown? Well, now you have because that's what my administration has brought. Look, you know, a generation ago, we did not address this issue the way we should have. I'm not gonna make the mistakes of previous administrations by not investing in people. That's the surest way to build a better, stronger, safer Chicago. On Shot Spider, you're sure you're making the right call on this? Well, what we have seen, less than 1% have led to arrests. The vast majority of the alerts lead to nothing. But what I can tell you is this, I made a commitment to hire 200 more detectives. I said that I would do that in my first term. I'm gonna complete that by the end of this year. We've already hired 120 detectives, and we have another graduating class coming up soon. And we're making critical investments that we're already seeing the return on those investments. Homicides are down, shootings are down, investments are up. That's how we build a better, stronger, safer Chicago. Migrant um, tent base camp mm -hmm. in Brighton Park. The governor came in and shut down your plans for that. Do you regret how that situation was handled? Well, you know, look, when I was <laughs> sworn in a year ago, here's what the situation was. We had children and women sleeping on floors in police stations. You had children and women sleeping on floors um, at airports. You had bloated contracts that I inherited and there was no public benefit for them. No one is sleeping on floors in police stations or airports. We have saved the taxpayers over $200 million, we've brought in the state and the county to respond to an international crisis that requires federal intervention, along with a governor of Texas who is determined to create chaos. We've built an operation that's centered around people's humanity, that have saved taxpayers' dollars, brought in the state, brought in the county to respond to this mission. Now, here was, here's the goal. The goal was to make sure that we move these families to, to, to ultimate settlement. The state, Catholic Charities, community-based organizations have resettled over 20,000 families of the 40,000 that have arrived here. But the key to all of this is the federal government has to act. President Biden and the Senate have put forth a substantive immigration policy um, reform bill that the former president of the United States of America, Donald Trump, told Republicans not to work with them. 
That's the frustration. That's the problem. If there's any blame in this situation, it's President, the former president, Donald Trump, and the governor of Texas. Here's the last thing that I think is an important note. Not one bus has arrived in the city of Chicago since the end of December. Not one bus. Now the governor of Texas is sending those buses to the suburbs because he wants to circumvent the order and structure that we've built around this. No other city in America has been able to handle this crisis as well as we have. If there's someone out there that's doing it better than Chicago, I would like to know because we certainly will take notes. You did clear police stations. You did clear the airport. Are you willing to admit, though, that the migrant tent camp in Brighton Park was a misstep or was a mistake? The whole goal was to make sure that people weren't not living on floors. We fixed it. We fixed it. What do you do if there is a flood of buses full of migrants that show up during the DNC? We're preparing for it. You know, look, we don't have do you, do you control. Expect it? Look, we don't have control over what the mad person in Texas is going to do. We don't have control over that, right? And so what we've done, as you may have already noticed, um, we have not only cleared police districts as well as airports, but we have now um, structured our uh, migrant um, temporary shelters to be able to manage this crisis a little better. So we had as many as 15,000 in shelters. Now we're down as of this morning to 7,600. The state of Illinois, um, and I'm grateful for it, they have committed um, to operating shelters as well. I've said this from the very beginning, the city of Chicago cannot do it by itself. The governor responded to that request and I'm grateful for his leadership. Can you reassure Chicagoans uh, who are worried about the DNC, violence or potentially violent protests. Does the city have any plans to deal with that? We do. Look, my vision for the DNC is pretty straightforward. A safe, peaceful, but vibrant and energetic convention where the beauty and the soul of Chicago can be on full display. And so working with uh, my police department, along with other local departments, including the Secret Service, to ensure safe, peaceful demonstrations, while also making sure that the energy and the vibrancy of the city of Chicago, the greatest city in the world, can be on full display. That's my vision, and I'm confident that we'll be able to carry that out. You're about to negotiate a new contract with the teachers union. Mm -hmm. Can you negotiate a contract that is both fair to the teachers union and to the taxpayers of Chicago? Well, I've negotiated multiple contracts. I just want to acknowledge the fact that we have raised the wages for our park employees. Some of them were making well less than $30,000, $35,000 a year. We've negotiated um, a contract with our teachers' assistants as well as um, security guards. These are people who serve this city um, in the most public way at our parks and our schools. As far as public education is concerned, I am best uniquely qualified to actually lead a vision for our public school system. Why do you say so? Well, one, I'm the first mayor to send my children to the public schools yeah. in Chicago. I taught in the Chicago public schools. I'm a product of public education. Look, where there is alignment with what teachers are asking for, as well as my vision for, for public schools in Chicago, we're going to lean into that alignment. Where there are things that could be disjointed, we're going to work through it. Just like I worked through it with, the, with our police officers, with our park workers, with our support staff in our buildings, um, in our school buildings, we'll work through any of those challenges. It's a little more nuanced with you though, right? Because yet yeah, you, you do have kids that are, that are in CPS schools, you were a former teacher, you also organized mm. for the Chicago Teachers Union, and the Chicago Teachers Union is a big reason why you and I are sitting here having this conversation <laughs> today. So, so the taxpayers who look at this contract negotiation and, and they're a little leery about you specifically handling this. They don't have to be. I have the vision for a public education system that expects every single child to have everything that they need. Who's in disagreement with that? No one's in disagreement with that. And so again, where there's alignment, we're gonna lean into it. And where there are things that are disjointed, just like when I was negotiating the contract with our police officers, with our park workers, with our support staff in our school buildings, we'll work through those dynamics. This will be no different. Teachers Union comes to you and says, Mayor, we want 
higher pay and better <laughs> benefits. How do you tell the teachers union no, if necessary? Well, look, the areas where there's disjointment, we'll have to work through that. But the first order of business is to get to the yes. What do we agree on? Do we agree that every single child should have a library and a librarian, social workers, counselors, class sizes that are managed? That's what, that's what all families want, right? There's no, there's no you know, disagreement around there. You know, as far as my fiduciary responsibility um, to make sure that the budget works for everyone, I've already proven that I can do that. A $16.77 billion budget that I balanced without raising property taxes. Now, previous administrations, you know, have caused and created the financial instability. I'm working to fix it. What is, is your relationship with the police superintendent, or how is that relationship? It's terrific. You know, Superintendent Snelling is the son of Inglewood. Yeah. He's 30 years of experience in law enforcement. I have absolute confidence in his leadership. Do you two ever disagree? I mean, <laughs> you know, I think what the, the fairest way to put that is that, you know, he's been in law enforcement, and it's incumbent upon me to listen and to hear his perspective. But he ultimately knows my vision for the people of Chicago. It's his responsibility to help carry that out. And so it's not so much about you know, disagreement. It's more or less about how do we build a better, stronger, safer Chicago together. And uh, we're doing that. Do you believe the police officers of this city respect you? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. And I respect them. That, that's why, you know, it wasn't difficult for me to work through a negotiation for their contract. It wasn't. Because men and women are showing up every single day to serve and protect this city. Making sure that they are fairly compensated, that's the least we can do. Other administrations seem to struggle with that. So I'm grateful to have the support of the police department. And my entire administration support the women and men who show up every single day risking their lives on behalf of the people of Chicago. Some officers, uh, last, last question. question, sure. Um, some officers feel like you don't have their backs. So what would be your message to those officers? I'm gonna show up every single day to build a better, stronger, safer Chicago. And we're gonna do that together. Homicides are down, shootings are down, investment is up in this city. The best way in which for, for us to transform this city is to do it together, and I'm bringing everyone together, the business community, the philanthropic community, workers, um, whether that's law enforcement, educators, it's gonna take all of us to address the 40 years of gross neglect that has been the prevailing form of politics in this city for a very long time. I'm grateful that I've had the chance to serve in this capacity for the first year, and I'm looking forward to the next 23. <laughs> Mayor of Chicago. <laughs> A lot has changed for you. It has yeah. to have changed personally for yeah. you over the course of this last year. How is being mayor on life and family <laughs> and the kids and, and you being the man that you were before you took this job a year ago? Well, it's been the joy of my life. You know, I could not do this without my wife. Um, you know, my wife, Stacy, has been just uh, miraculous. And we're going to see um, a little bit more of her in, in, the, in the coming years? You know, I mean, she, she enjoys her role as being the first black first lady in the history of Chicago. Um, but we wanted to make sure that our home was absolutely um, stabilized as we adjust to, to, to all of this attention. But uh, she's well. My three children, Owen, Ethan, and Brayden. Ethan just turned 12 years old. Uh, Brayden will turn uh, 10 in, in July. My oldest son, I have to prepare him to learn how to drive. He's got his work <laughs> permit, and um, now he's working as well. So it has truly been humbling for our entire family to be able to serve the city of Chicago. Is it hard? Is it hard trying to do both, to be the dad? You know, I mean, it's like, any, it's, I mean, it's, truthfully, it's like any other parent who has a job, quite frankly, yeah. you know, where you just have to strike the balance between showing up every single day for the people who elected you, but also showing up every single day for the people um, that have a real intimate um, relationship with you. So whether it's making soccer games, baseball games, um, music recitals, or making sure that we all take the trash out, clean the bathroom, and you know, make sure that the lawn is, 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 is not embarrassing the neighbors. So, <laughs> so, so we're, we're working through it, but it's really been very humbling and we're grateful for the opportunity. 
Watch breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC7 Chicago Eyewitness News.